Yes, I love Hublot. Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch Cam. Today we're gonna unbox a very eccentric and special watch. We're gonna talk about a brand which is very hated online. I don't know really why, because I cannot relate to that. And the model we're gonna talk about today is the Hublot Masterpiece MP11 with a 14-day power reserve. As you see, this is no ordinary watch inside because the box is pretty, pretty big. It's very heavy as well. And there's not only the watch inside, there's something else. From the design, it's very simple. A black box with a Hublot logo embossed on the top of it. We have to uncover these. Voila, here you have the first sign of you know, the DNA of Hublot, which is this vertically brushed top bezel or Hublot, which means porthole in French. This box actually has a secret compartment as well. If we show it like here, here you go, you pull out this part. There's, you know, a little brochure. The certificate of authenticity here, you can see the watch on a nice, you know, see-through pamphlet, signature of the CEO, which is Ricardo Guadalupe, and that's it. But something special is below this. We've got a USB charging cable, and this is actually used for this thing. This is a sort of a screwdriver with which you can actually wind the watch. As I said at the beginning, this watch is a 14 day power reserve. So imagine winding it via the crown would be pretty annoying. That's why they give you this. You press a button with the Hublot sign on it and it turns. I'm gonna demonstrate this later on the watch so you see how it works. And if we now open the top lid of the box, you'll see there's a nice leather, you know, pouch above something. And voila, the Hublot MP11 from the Masterpiece Collection. This video is unfortunately not sponsored by Hublot watches. I'm not forced to make it, there's no gun on my head, but I just love the brand. I am an owner of a Hublot watch already. As you might have noticed, I have my Hublot Lab Fusion here on the side, which is a Singapore Watch Club edition. I made a video about it, I wear it a lot, and also I'm very proud of it. This is by the way, not the last Hublot I'm gonna buy. I'm looking to purchase a Richard Olinsky edition with a very cool dial. I see why some people hate on the brand if you look at the watches below 10,000 Swiss francs, which often feature a Salita movement and just, you know, at first glance can't compete with, let's say, Rolex, Omega or other mainstream brands. But in the high-end spectrum of watchmaking, in the auto lingerie, like the watch you have today here in my hands, it's something I think that's very unique about Hublot. And the price point is often good if you compare it to the competition. Hublot was founded in 1980 by an Italian guy named Carlo Crocco. In 2004, the godfather of the watchmaking industry, Mr. Jean-Claude Beaver, came on board. At the time, Hublot was producing around 9,000 watches for an average retail price of 2,000 US dollars, which is nothing if you compare it to today's watches, and especially the watch we're gonna talk about today. The estimated revenue at the time was around 24 million Swiss francs. In 2005 at Baselworld, Hublot presented the Hublot Big Bang, which really made a big bang. It was a combination of materials and the start of the art of fusion for the brand. The last revenue numbers I could find were from 2018 and Hublot made a staggering $625 million for the group. This is the power of Jean-Claude Beaver, who many know as the you know, savior of brands. He started off at AP, then went to Omega, bought Blancpain, sold it to the Swatch Group for $60 million, went to Hublot, then became head of the LVMH watchmaking division and so on. This man is a pure legend, and thankfully, I met him once at Baselworld. The main characteristics of this watch, except the cool appeal, is the long power reserve. Some other watches who have a long power reserve are, for example, the Vacheron Constantin Patrimoine Traditionnel Tourbillon, which is a 14-day power reserve. Then we've got the Beauvais Amadeo Fleurier Tourbillon Braveheart, which has a 22-day power reserve. You might know the Jacob & Co. Quentin watch, which we had in the channel as well, which has a 31-day power reserve. Then you've got the famous Alain & Zene 31, the Hublot MP07 with a 40-day power reserve. Then we go into the second place with the Hublot Masterpiece MP5 La Ferrari, one of my favorite watches, which has a very cool winding pistol, which has a 50 days power reserve. And so far, the one with the biggest power reserve, the Vasho Constantin Traditionnel Twin Beat Perpetual Calendar, with a 65 days power reserve. The model we have here on hands is actually made out of 3D carbon. It's woven carbon with three layers. And on the side of the case, around the whole periphery of it, you see a black sapphire window, 
Through this window you can actually see the movement from the side and also the battles here. If you remove the strap, because it has a quick strap change button here, you can see it from the bottom as well. So again, the sapphire crystal is sandwiched between the front and the back case. Hublot is known for the art of fusion and also creating new materials and utilizing others. This model also comes in a few different examples. There's a full sapphire version, a blue sapphire version, a green saxon version, you've got an 18 karat king gold with a 3D carbon bezel, there's a 3D carbon rainbow with a rainbow sapphire bezel, you've got one in magic gold, red ceramic, and for those who wanna be a bit more flashy, the diamond version as well. What's also typical about this watch is you can see also on the box here that we have the Hublot shaped screws. We have six on the bezel, four on the lugs and also four on the side of the case with the crown and on the other side. The dial is actually very easy to read. The whole dial is here at 12 o'clock. As you can see the movement is skeletonized, you can see through it. The dial looks like it's floating above the movement and below the sapphire crystal. You can find Swiss Superluminova on the indexes and also the hour and minute hand as well as on the days of the power reserve. What is a bit funny about this watch though is that the day of the power reserve here is actually almost instantly visible and the dial is maybe on the second place. Maybe they just wanted to advertise this fact a bit more, but I think the dial is slightly unproportional to the whole watch. Of course there's a reason for it. You can see at 6 o'clock we have 7 barrels. These actually store the power reserve of the watch. Again, 14 days, 2 weeks or 336 hours. And from the side, you can actually see how much place they take up. So again, fitting the dial here makes absolute sense. You see now also how the case is shaped and the bezel as well as the sapphire crystal. This must have taken a lot of time and money to create and also to develop. Again, I always commend to Hublot for creating these special components. If they wanted to make their lives easier, they would just have made a bigger case. But again, this wasn't the goal for Hublot. The whole movement has 270 components and it has no automatic winding rotor, of course, because it's a hand-wound movement. You can see the barrels also from the case pack. All the bridges are black treated. And I really like the industrial look of it. It looks like a small factory. The movement beats at a frequency of 28,800 vibrations per hour. And it also has a silicon escape wheel and pallet fork to increase the longevity and the durability of the components. Comparing this watch now to let's say high-end Richard Mills or high-end APs, and when I tell you the price, you might be surprised of it. The price of this model is actually 82,000 US dollars. And again, it's limited to 200 pieces. Yes, most Hublot watches and most special Hublot watches are limited editions. People also complain about this. What they forget is that John claude Beaver's idea was for Hublot to be everywhere. So if there's a small club in a small village and it's important, he would make a limited edition about it. And it's not something I'm bothered with. Let's now come to the most interesting part of this whole review, winding the movement. Again, you can do it via this big rubber crown here, but it might take you quite some time. Or you take this screwdriver like gadget, you push it in the crown like this, you press a button, and here we go. Now you wind the watch, and it's going a bit quicker than if you do it with your hands. Again, 14 days of power reserve, it's not nothing, so you gotta be patient and you'll be happy that you wind it fully. As you can see, we just wound the watch for two days, which would have taken us quite a few turns with the crown. Let me now put the watch on the wrist and show how it looks. You can see we got a folding clasp pair with the Hublot logo. And when I close it, you have the Hublot logo here as well. Turning the watch around, you can see its height. The point where the barrels are, the height is actually 17.4 millimeters. And where there's no barrels on the dial, the height is 15 millimeters. The diameter of the watch is 45 millimeters, which from my wrist is no problem. If you have a smaller wrist though, this might be an issue. As you can see, the strap is really ergonomic and it hugs the wrist. So go and try it out and maybe it'll fit you. Luck to luck, I measured 57.8 millimeters. And if we take this measurement where the straps are, it's 70 millimeters. And because this is a 3D carbon case, the watch is extremely light. So I think if you have it on the whole day, you might just forget it's there. Overall, I really like this watch and it's very distinct and unique. 
We've got some luminola here, which probably shines really nice when you drive the car and go into a tunnel. You have this cool screwdriver where you can make some cool videos with it to wind the watch. And again, you probably have a lot of people asking you what this watch is. You'll get some haters, of course, but also people that will envy you at the end of the day. Let me know what you think about this exact watch or maybe which is your favorite Hublot. Would you like to own one or no? I'm always curious to know that because I hear a lot of things online, but in person, most people told me that my Hublot is nice or that they wouldn't mind getting one in their collection. Again, leave a comment down below. I'm really curious to see what you're gonna say. At this point, I wanna also thank Bayer Chronometry. They're the official retailer for Hublot, Rolex and Patek in Zurich for lending me this watch for the review. Leave a like on this video, it really helps me out a lot to grow the channel, subscribe as well, and share with somebody who might like Hublot or maybe who hates Hublot, and maybe we can convince him otherwise. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you next week.